Network Service of the Nigerian Civil Authority, um, Lamia Ali. It is another day of plenary here at the House of Representatives, and I have with me the Chairman House Committee on Rules and Business, Representative Abubakar Fulata. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much, Lamia. Now, uh, what is the outlook uh, on today's uh, legislative business at plenary? Well, uh, today's plenary house is resuming uh, the date on the uh, general principles of the budget as presented by Mr. President. Uh, you could recall that yesterday the House started the general uh, debate on the general principles of the budget. Uh, we are continuing the debate today with a view to ending it today and then passing the budget for second reading. Now, based on uh, the contributions of members so far on the uh, deliberations concerning yeah, concerning deliberations on the general principles. What has been the general feeling uh, across House members, that is, across party lines, concerning the 2020 appropriation bill? Well, uh, the general consensus, general uh, consensus of, of people, uh, members are satisfied with the with general principles of the of the budget. Uh, but uh, you know, there is no way you can have a, a general uh, consensus. As far as uh, the budget is concerned, especially in view of the fact that uh, you have uh, opposition within the within the within the within the, within the chamber, uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, parties, we have PBP, PRP, and other political parties. But the general, generally, uh, members are all okay with the with the with the, with the, with the principles of general principles of the budget. Uh, thank you uh, very much, sir, for giving us an outlook of the proceedings for today. Well, we're now going to take you into the chambers where members are going to continue on the liberations of the general principles of the 2020 appropriation bill, after which it will be passed for second reading. The speaker, Femi Bajabi Amila, is already seated, so we now take you into the green chambers. Motion. Thank you, because Mr. Speaker. We have to move fast. Thanks. Our performing speaker, thank you very much. And my colleagues, once more, my name is Jerry Alabaza. I'm from Imo State, representing our law, also an inferior consistency. Mr. Speaker, this motion is not crying wolf, Mr. Speaker. It's about three or four foreign companies, Mr. Speaker, who are interested in modernizing customs and uh, seeking partnership with a lot of ministries which had recourse to the National Assembly. They met that to meet Federal Minister of Finance, that to meet Federal Minister of Justice, that to meet Plan and, uh, and Budget, that to meet ICRC, that to meet Nigeria Customs, but there's no way they mentioned Nigeria National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, we just found out that these companies are about bringing their selfish agenda into the national economy. They are bringing their selfishness into the national economic agenda because most of them are not qualified for this modernization they are talking about. Mr. Speaker, another thing is the target for this is 1% CIS. Mr. Speaker, the need for me to explain what it is. What 1% CIS means, 1% of comprehensive import provision scheme which every importer pays when it brings in any goods from the seaport, from the airport, and from the border. This figure is a huge money. And that's from where the central bank pays customs and retains the balance. Mr. Speaker, this balance is always very huge. And that's why all the modernizers or concessionaries are targeting it. By 2011, Mr. Speaker, you were here when a motion was moved about a single window, the attempt of the single window then was to appropriate the custom activities through 
this 1% CIS. And that was killed by members through adult committee, and it was stopped. And Mr. Speaker, I have the votes and proceedings here to show. Mr. Speaker, again, in 2017, one company called Adele entered into an illegal agreement with a technical committee of the Central Bank, which supervises this 1%. Mr. Speaker, when we saw this, we drew the attention of the CG, and it came. Mr. Feleke, because I have to talk with FAS, who was the chairman of the custom committee, took this into him and he saw it. Mr. Speaker, that arrangement was cut on. It was killed. Mr. Speaker, I'm surprised that this year again, the thing has surfaced in another form. This time around, by foreign companies. Which, uh, some of these companies I know, I don't know whether they have Nigerian counterparts. But Mr. Speaker, they are all very suspicious. Especially when we consider concession our concession that no money should be spent with any cost here. They are all eager, eager to benefit from this one percent, which I told you is very huge. Mr. Speaker, the most important thing is that by 2012, the other modernizers had already uh, handed over modernization process to customs. And customs are now well equipped to embark on internal modernization because they have gone on what they call train the trainers' courses. They are not teaching themselves. So there's no point for any other external modernization. That is why we are crying, raising our alarm, that there's no way these foreigners will come and teach us what the customs already have learned. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, the customs have done a lot. Today, you can hear the city of customs saying that they collect between five to nine billion on a daily basis, Mr. Speaker. It's very attractive, and that's why this is by killing to see whether they can talk about modernization so that they can pay from that one percent. Mr. Speaker, the journey so far is so good for customs. Mr. Speaker, another thing we will talk about is customs is so rising now, so productive, they are doing a lot, and that's why you can see a general being a CSO of a retired college. So, because we are saying that Kosovo is doing very well. Therefore, Mr. Speaker, I urge all my colleagues here, especially those who are ranking by yes, age and experience, to support this motion so that we don't embark on a situation whereby, Mr. Speaker, the, the, the fall of a dead leaf is a warning to the green ones. The fact that this thing has failed in 2011, failed in 2017, there is no way it cannot fail in 2019. There is no generation that squanders what is meant for the next generation. If I allow this to happen, it means, Mr. Speaker, it is 20 years, 20 years. When they retire, those who are involved in this, it means the customer will continue to pay their children. Therefore, I urge this house to help me to stop this so that the customer will continue to perform this statutory risk. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yeah, uh Oh, Jay, what, what are your prayers? The prayers are there. Uh, my prayers are one, to mandate the Committee of Finance Cousins Public Petition and Agreement, a treaty, of the House of, to conduct public hearing on the above career proposed concession and unveil the foreign and local interested parties. Of the consortium of sponsors, financiers, and technical consultants. One. Two, to mandate the same committees to investigate the expenditure and disbursement patterns of this 1% by the central bank, which was handed over to Council in 2011. When the service provider handed over, there was no person to pay again for that. They were keeping the money. Three, the all the different parties to maintain status quo pending the outcome of this investigation. Mr. Speaker. How, uh, what's the timeline for your investigation? investigation? Three weeks. Timeline for Three the investigation. Weeks. Do you have your resolution? Three weeks. Three weeks. Three weeks? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Okay. We'll just take on the side side so that we can move on. We have several issues today. On the side. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Distinguished honorable colleagues. I remain on the side, Nicholas Osai. I represent Dr. Okwani Federal Constituency of Delta State. 
Mr. Speaker, I wholeheartedly adopt the submission of our other statesmen here and adopt them as if they were mine. Uh, secondly, Mr. Speaker, there are an interesting thing this Honorable House needs to know. And one of the organizations, which is part of the four consulting uh, uh, companies that is bidding for this issue, and one of those organizations that has been banned in the United States of America in the year 2012, Hawaii. Hawaii is an organization that was banned and even sued by the United States. Bad, bad for what? Yeah, bad for what? For what? Espionage. Espionage. For espionage. So they denied. And uh, when such organization is coming to your system that involves security, there is need for this honorable house to rise to the future and stop such impending danger. And that is what this prayer is seeking to do and to cure that aspect of it. And Mr. Speaker, when they are doing any issues of international agreement with a foreign organization, treaty making procedures and agreement making procedure act also stipulate in section five, subsection one B, subsection one C, and subsection one A, that this agreement must be brought to the National Assembly. Must be brought. And Mr. Speaker, an agreement is being negotiated and yet has not come to the National Assembly. It's an aberration. And the earlier we cure this abnormally, the better for Nigerians and the better for the National Assembly. I think that's what this motion is seeking for. Mr. Speaker, I so support the motion uh, to, to see the speed of life that is required. I so support. Those in support of this motion and its prayers, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. The ayes have a motion referred to the committees on customs, finance, and agreements. Point of order. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues. Mr. Speaker, my point of order is a matter of urgent public importance. Yes, it's a motion, Mr. Speaker. And uh, I urge that we suspend our rules to enable me to take this uh, very important motion and also to say that the matter is urgent and it's all about the mayhem in the people of Ndeguru in the Ambassador to Government of Abia State. Mr. Speaker, I so move. Any second? Honorable Kiruka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am Kiruka Onyejo. I represent the good people of Isukwa Tumunyo, Chikada Constituency, and from Abia State. I rise to second the motion as moved by Honorable Lucy Prestige. I so second. Those in support that the matter is urgent and that we suspend our rules to take it now, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, have it. Honorable, please move your motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am Honorable Prestige OC, member representing the people of Abba North, Abasa Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I am from Abia State. Mr. Speaker and Honorable colleagues, my motion is on the urgent need to save the lives of the people of Ndeguru in Abasa local government area from killings, further and sacking, restriction of movement, and attack by joint police team from Ndeguru and Cameroon Barracks Police Station in Aba, Abia State. Mr. Speaker, the House notes that mayhem was unleashed on the residents of Oko Bombo Street Ntueke Road, Umuasi Road, and Abba Street, and East Axis in Abba South LGA by the police officers allegedly coming from Ndegoro Police Station and Cameroon Barracks Police Station between Friday, 27th of September 2019, and Tuesday, 1st of October 2019. Also note that the Oko Jumbo Ntueke Zone was allegedly invaded in a mafia way by a joint police team from Degoro and Cameroon Road Police Barracks, killing unarmed citizens, setting buildings ablaze, 
destroying properties, cutting away properties, and taking some residents in area into captive. For a note, that the police officers from this station are always manning the Oko Jumbo Tueke Street of the Aba for the purpose of engaging in easy passage of those involved in illicit business, kidnapping, and other things that are totally what they call titles from them in their business to drive in the area. Informed that on 27th of September 2019, at about 5 p.m., a team of police officers from Cameroon Barracks Station headed to headed by a police cockroachly called Al Haji, led his team of police officers to the drug dealers to collect their customary title. Also informed that because the day's collection was not huge, they proceeded to mount roadblocks at Degema Street, Oko Jumbo, Umuasi Junction, extracting money from commuter buses and commercial track side tracks operators in the process, harassed those that patronized the dealers and this infiltrated them in their illicit business witness a sharp decline after they have offered title. Further informed Mr. Speaker that due to the roadblock mounted by Alaji and his team, confrontation from some criminals caused the police team led by Alaji to shoot and eventually kill one of the area boys. And in represent attack, the area boys set the KK bus used by the police on fire, resulting to the death of the KK driver and Alaji. In the course of this, the criminals collected the AK-47 rifle from the police. While we condemn the wanton destruction of the people's properties by the suspected policemen, we equally condemn in strong terms the killing of a policeman and his driver and snatching of their guns from them. We therefore commiserate with the IG of police on the death of the police officer and the governor of Abia State on the death of a civilian. Disturbed, Mr. Speaker and honorable colleagues, that the fracas which ensued led to the police team to go and reinforce and invaded the Oko Jumbo and Tueke zone, thereby unleashing mayhem, burning down houses, destroying properties worth millions of naira, and taking some people into custody. For a disturbed that the invasion of this particular area continued unabated on the 28th and 29th September 2019, allegedly by the police from Ndegoro Police Station. Setting several other buildings ablaze with properties vandalized and looted. More disturbed, honorable colleagues, that on Tuesday, 1st of October 2019, while the rest of the nation were celebrating the independence of Nigeria, another act of vandalism and arson was, was carried out allegedly by the team of policemen from this particular station, setting ablaze three buildings in Anaba Street and five buildings in Okojumbo Street all raised down totally. Worried that these distant acts and heinous killings allegedly by the police were done with unpaid up impunity and rendering all inhabitants and residents of this whole area homeless and their means of livelihood destroyed. More worried, Mr. Speaker, that the attendant effect of these attacks have left the people in the Abbas South local government federal area devastated and more impoverished as many have been rendered homeless and in the and their means of livelihood destroyed, reminiscent to that of worse than that of Nigerian civil war. Mr. Speaker, I plead that a minute silence should be observed in honor of the deceased police officer, his driver, and some of the residents who lost their lives in this particular inferno. Mr. Speaker, I pray that the House mandate the House Committee on Police Affairs, Drugs and Narcotics to immediately investigate the remote and immediate causes of the incident with a view to fishing out the perpetrators of this heinous and barbaric act and report back to the House in two weeks. Urge the National Human Rights Commission to set up a panel of inquiry to that all cases of human rights abuses can be ascertained and appropriate sanctions, method and compensation paid to innocent landlords and residents of the area. Facilitate a meeting between community leaders, survivors, families of victims of this mayhem to nip this menace and avoid further escalation of hostilities. Urge NEMA to expedite action by sending relief materials to the victims and affected areas of this particular area. Urge National Orientation Agency, NOAA, and the National Drug Law Enforcement Agency to facilitate 
several workshops in Abana North and South Federal constituency on the ills of drug abuse and violence. Mr. Speaker, I so move. Yes, any second to, to the motion? Honorable Idris. Uh, Mr. Speaker, Honorable Members, my name is uh, Honorable Barista Idris Abubakar Yarima. I represent Pekafune from Yobe State. I second the motion moved by Honorable Member. Can I do second? Uh, those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Ayes have it. Uh, Honorable Prestige, I believe this is very straightforward. Yes, it's very, very straightforward. Um, what was your prayer? Yeah, Mr. Speaker, my prayers are want to mandate the House Committees on Police Affairs, Drugs and Narcotics to immediately investigate the remote and immediate causes of the incident with a view to fishing out the perpetrators of these seniors and barbaric acts and report back to the House in two weeks. That's my number one prayer, sir. The second prayer is to urge the National Human Rights Commission to set up a panel of inquiry so that all cases of human rights abuses can be ascertained and appropriate sanctions meted and compensation paid to innocent landlords and residents of the area. Mr. Speaker, I have a thought and uh, thought one. Facilitate the meeting between the community leaders, survivors, and families of victims of this mayhem to nip this menace and avoid further escalation of facilities. Urge NEMA to expedite action by sending relief material to the victims and affected areas in the, uh, of Abano, Abasat local government. And urge National Orientation Agency and Drug Law Enforcement Agency to facilitate various workshops in the area on the issues of drug abuse and violence. Thank you. Um, yeah. Those in support of the motion, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. The motion referred to committees uh, on police, drugs and narcotics and human rights. Honorable Onuga. Okay. Okay. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is Honorable Otumba Adeunmi Oriyomi Ononuga. I represent the fabulously united people of the Kene, Shagamu, Remonov, I'm from Ogun State. Mr. Speaker, I rise to move a matter of urgent importance on behalf of the girl child in Nigeria as tomorrow being the day of the girl child by, uh, declared by the United Nations and will not be sitting, I think it is important that we address some issues affecting our girl children. Honorable Manusoro, I approach the chair. Also, I would also like to ask that order 804 be suspended so that I take this motion immediately. Okay, so we have um, three motions. One, to suspend our rules, to allow us to take a third motion of urgent public importance. Two, to consider it as a motion of urgent public importance and suspend our rules to take it today. We'll put all three motions in one basket. Any second honorable blessing? Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. My name is Blessing Onyeche Onu, and I represent the people of Utukbo Oyumni Federal Constituency. I am from Benue State. I rise to second the motion, Honorable, uh, Honorable Tumba move. I so second. Those in support of the three motions, we say aye. Those against, we say nay. Aye, have it. Honorable Onuga. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The motion is in, on improving hygiene and empowering girls for a brighter tomorrow in commemoration of the 2019 International Day of the Girl Child in Nigeria, sponsored 
by Honorable Otumade Omi Onolunga, co-sponsored by Honorable Nkiruka Onye Jocha, Honorable Vincent Ofumelu, Honorable Taiwo Oluga, and Honorable Blessing Ono. The House notes that the 11th of October every year is marked as the International Day of the Girl Child, recognized by the United Nations to amplify their voices and stand up for their rights and needs. The House also notes that this year's theme is Girl Force, unscripted and unstoppable, organized as a global move to celebrate achievements towards supporting girls since the adoption of the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action. The House is aware that the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action to protect young and adolescent girls is focused on tackling issues like child marriage, education inequality, gender-based violence, climate change, self-esteem. Honorable Raji, please approach. And girls' rights to menstrual hygiene. Also aware that menstrual hygiene is vital to the empowerment and well being of women and girls worldwide, ensuring that women and girls live in environments that values and supports their ability to manage their menstruation with dignity. The House is also concerned that in Nigeria, 5% of women lack adequate privacy for menstrual hygiene management and globally over 500 women and girls lack adequate facilities for menstrual hygiene management and inadequate water, sanitation and hygiene wash facilities, early detection of breast and cervical cancer, mainly in public places including schools workplaces pose major challenges to women and girls. The House is cognizant that menstrual hygiene management is the process where women and adolescent girls use clean menstrual hygiene management materials to absorb or collect blood that can be changed in privacy as often as necessary for the duration of the menstruation period using soap and water for washing their bodies as required, and having access to facilities to dispose of used menstrual management material. The House is worried that the major constraint or to effective menstrual hygiene management is the high cost of sanitary pads as a result of the harsh economic realities in the country, where a large number of families live below the poverty line. The House is also worried about the disheartening low level of awareness regarding menstrual hygiene management in Nigeria and the growing dispersion of stigmas and misconceptions related to menstruation, especially restriction from social activities, deeply rooted in attitudes and myths about menstruation, including an erroneous belief that a menstruating woman or girl is cursed and is a harbinger of bad luck. Desirous of the need to improve menstrual hygiene of Nigerian women and girls by removing sales tax on feminine hygiene products and regularly distributing free menstrual pads in schools, providing access to affordable, quality menstrual products. The House resolves to urge the Federal Ministries of Health and Women Affairs to initiate ways of improving the hygiene of women and girls in commemoration of the 2019 International Day of the Girl Child in Nigeria. Also to mandate the Committee on Women Affairs and Social Development to convene a stakeholders legislative summit on the challenges of hygiene management in Nigeria and report back in four weeks. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Any second answers? Uh, so 
the leader is confusing me. It's a girl child thing, right? Let's allow the women to to have their day. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am Kiruka Oyejocha. I represent the people of Isukwatu Munochi, federal constituency. By God's grace, I'm deputy chief whip. I rise to second this motion, and I plead because of what we have in our other paper that the speaker should apply, oblige us and just uh, put the question so that uh, we'll report back within four weeks. Thank you. Uh, those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, have it. What about Nanuga? Um, what was your prayer? It was to urge the Federal Ministries of Health and Women Affairs to initiate ways of improving the hygiene of women and girls, and also to um, mandate the Committee of Women Affairs and Social Development to convene a stakeholders' legislative summit on the challenges of hygiene management in Nigeria, and report back within four weeks. Sir. Thank you. Um, those in support of the motion, please say aye. Those against me, say nay. The ayes have it. Motion is referred to committees on health and women affairs. Honorable Musa Pali, the last uh, motion of urgent public importance for today. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Honorable Musa Mohammed Ali, member representing Alali Rikirfi Federal Constituency. I am from Bauchi State. Mr. Speaker, I have a motion on the matters of audience and public importance. The need for the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to investigate the boat accident in Kerefi, local government area of Bauchi State, and to send relief material because of the incident of losing more than 35 people on 7th of this month. I saw more voices here. Any second there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, my name is Mutar Zakari Chawai. Our federal constituency, Mr. Speaker, I'm from Kaduna State. I rise to second the motion uh, moved by Honorable Musa Pali. I so second. Thank you. Those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. Aye, sorry. Honorable Pali, please give us the highlights of your motion. Mr. Speaker, I remain. Sorry, move your motion. Not highlights, move your motion. Just read it out. Thank you. Thanks. Order 8, Rule 4, to allow me to present my motion. Just Go ahead, you can move the motion now. The need for the National Management Agency, NEMA, to investigate the boat accident in Kirfi local government area of Bauchi State and to send relief material. Note, there was a boat accident which occurred on Monday, 7 October 2019 in Gangula Rivers, precisely at Mapiching Kuna in Kirfi local government area of Bauchi State. Also note 
that 35 people were abroad the ill fitness, but at the time of the mission, aware that many lives were lost in the unfortunate incident and rescue operation has since commenced, which has led to the recovery of 10 bodies and still counting. Also aware that His Excellency the President Muhammad Buhari, GCFR Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, of Nigeria has sent his condolence to the government of good people of Bauchi State over the unfortunate incidents. Or that incidents of both Misha are rather becoming too regular in our waterways across the country. Concern that it is urgent, major, and step are not taken. More lives and properties will be lost to both in the country. Resort mandated the Committee on Maritime Safety Education and Administration to investigate the remote cause of the board mission and report to the House in three weeks. Number two, directed the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to provide safety guards such as safety boards like jackets and many more. Number three, directed the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, to provide relief to the affected individual and family of the boat, the disease, and the survivor. Number four, directed Federal Ministry of Works and Housing to construct a bridge across Gangula River linking the affected community this bridge will include, but not limited to, Kirfi, Gaka, Guyaba, Guyaba Station. Oxab, number fifth, Oxab, in one minute silence, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues, in honor of the diseased people, I so move. Any second? Or with the house, do you want to second this? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my name is uh, Honorable Dennis Idaosa. I represent the good people of Ovia Ferra constituency. I rise to second the motion, ably moved by my colleague. I so second. Thank you. Those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. The ayes have it. Um, I believe the motion is very straightforward. I think there's Honorable Musa Pali's motion is very straightforward, so we can move on. Honorable Lidausa, you had an amendment. Did you have an amendment to that motion, to his prayers? Yes. Yeah. Um, the amendment, I also have a similar issue in my federal constituency, uh, precisely its local community. Uh, there's um, overflowing of a water bank has left the community, I mean, my, the, the people in the community about 65% homeless. So I would need, I will also um, add to the amendment, I mean, his prayers, that uh, if the relief material will be sent to my, my federal constituency to assist those people. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So those in support of the Honorable Pali's motion as amended by Honorable Dahosa, please say aye. Those against this say nay. Ayes have it. Motion referred to the National Emergency Maintenance Agency. Honorable. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a one minute silence in Honorable Musa Pali's. Uh, Motion, can we please all rise?
May the souls of the departed rest in peace. <laughs> Honorable colleagues, as was announced yesterday, we will take just five minutes to do what we do best in the house, to recognize at any time those who have excelled in their services to our country. This was announced yesterday. Last week was, uh, was uh, Teacher's Day. And uh, we have a principal and a teacher who were selected as the best principal of the year and the best teacher of the year, Mr. Ikuse Yidumi Pius and Mrs. Agnes Elusaki. We do not need to tell or remind ourselves the importance of teachers in our lives. I'll ask that the leader please move that the two high achievers be allowed into the chambers just for a quick five minutes so that we can go straight to the business of the day. Leader. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Alasan Adodogwa is my name, Mr. Speaker. Honorable members, I rise. Pursuant to Order 19, Rule 217 of the Standing Rules of the House of Representatives, move that the House do suspend our relevant order to allow for the admittance of the best teacher in Nigeria and the best principal in Nigeria into the floor of these hallowed chambers. Mr. Speaker, this is in line with the activities of the, world, of the World Teachers' Day. And the House should take advantage of this opportunity to celebrate in solidarity with Nigerian teachers. Mr. Speaker, I so move. Thank you, Leader. Any second there? Former Speaker Kano. I am Rat Honorable Kabira Lassan. I represent Rano Bunku, the Kibia Pedro constituency. With the Speaker, I am from Kano State. I rise to support the motion, I believe, moved by the Leader of the House. I so second. I just realized that you are both from Kano, you and the Leader. Can we have somebody thought the motion? Honorable Ben, can you thought that motion for us? into the house as moved by the leader of the house, seconded by the speaker, former speaker of Kano and third leg by Honorable Ben Kalu. Please say aye. Who's against? Please say nay. Ayes have it. Please can you let them in? Mr. Speaker, coincidentally the two teachers that will join us now are both from Kano State. The two teachers are from Kano State. How is that possible? Uh -uh. The, did you read the? Do I read the names again? Uh, okay. Incidentally, 
the principal is from Government Senior College Ekwe in Lagos State. And the teacher is from Ikorodu in Lagos State. Well, it's not called the Center of Excellence for nothing. Mr. Ikuse Idumi Pius and Mrs. Agnes Olushaki, the winners in celebration of the World Teachers Day, the winners of the National Best Principal of the Year and Best Teacher of the Year. Uh, Honorable Jimmy Benson, you have a motion to this effect? Yes, sir. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker, for yielding the floor to me. My name is Baba Jimmy Benson. I represent the very good people of the Korodu Federal Constituency. The House knows that this year's World Teachers Day was celebrated October 5, 2019, with the theme Young Teachers, the Future of the Profession, and was aimed at preparing ideas to attract and keep young people in the teaching profession. Aware that the celebration of teachers followed the United Nations Declaration in 1994 for the recognition of the World Teachers Day or International Teachers Day to celebrate teachers around the world for their efforts towards shaping the minds of several children and the society at large, even though they remain unsung heroes and heroines whose contributions to the society are underappreciated. Also aware that the United Nations in developing the thematic areas of concentration for the Sustainable Development Goal 4, quality education, recognizes the role of teachers as being the key to the achievements of education by 2030 agenda. Observes that the federal government in marking the day, instituted the President's Teachers and Schools Excellence Award to show appreciation for the immense contributions of teachers to nation building. Worried that despite the contributions of teachers to societal development, teachers in Nigeria are overworked and remain among the worst paid in the world. With pure, pure poor welfare and teaching environment. Also worried 
that currently none of the E9 countries, Bangladesh, Brazil, China, Egypt, India, Indonesia, Mexico, Nigeria, and Pakistan allocates less than 20% of its annual budget to education. The House resolves to recognize and honor the best teacher and best principal in Nigeria as a sign of appreciation and to show support to the teachers for their selfless sacrifices towards societal development. Urge the federal government to improve on the welfare and support schemes for teachers, especially in the area of training, using the science, technology, engineering, and mathematics approach in addressing education policy and curriculum choices in schools in order to improve competitiveness in science and technology development. Also urge the federal government to employ more teachers to address the issue of inadequate staffing and low productivity within the educational sector, and also increase budgetary allocation to the education se sector in the 2020 appropriation bill, so as to equip teachers with the requisite training and adequate facilities in the schools. Mandate the committees on tertiary education and services, and basic education and services, to ensure implementation. I shall move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Gololo. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Distinguished colleagues, Honorable Mohamed Gololo, representing the good and amenable people of Gololo, the Bogama Federal Constituency and from Bauchistan. I rise to second the motion, heavily moved by Honorable Baba Jimmy Benson, I saw second. Thank you. Motion moved by Honorable Jimmy Benson, supported by Mohamed Gololo. Those in support, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. The eyes have it. Honorable Jimmy Benson, just touch on the highlights, please. Speaker, there's a saying that the day we stop learning is the day we die. Among us here today, Mr. Speaker, are teachers who have excelled and a principal who has also excelled in the field of education. Mr. Speaker, there's no gain saying that the quality of our teachers and our principals will determine how the nation progresses. A country without an educational background or education as its bedrock will be a fumbling and a wumbling country, Mr. Speaker. To this end, Mr. Speaker, and not to belabor this issue, I rise to urge this House to honor teachers by passing this motion with the speed of light. I so move, Mr. Speaker. like to second the okay you move your motion I will put the question he was supposed to lead the debate yes yes because you said I so move again that's why you confuse me that's what you said again you confuse me you had already moved you were leading your debate so we'll get the leader of the house and the minority leader to contribute and so that we can wrap this up. Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable members. Once again, Alassan Ado Dogwa is my name. I represent Dogwa to the Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I'm from Kano State. Mr. Speaker, let me start by thanking you and the mover of the motion to allow us to discuss this important development on a very special day that is being observed world over, the World Teachers Day or the International Teachers Day. Mr. Speaker, I thank you 
up initial because you have come up with this initiative of where the house will rejoice and identify with achievers in their various fields of uh, our lives. Achievers not only in public service, achievers even in private services. Mr. Speaker, honorable members, I could remember only last month this house identified with the chief executive of Air, Air, Air Peace Nigeria, who was on the floor of this house to be, to be, to be commended for the, exemplary, for the exemplary action he took to identify with Nigerians in South Africa on account of the unfortunate xenophobic attack on our nationals in South Africa. This is an exemplary, it's an exemplary action, Mr. Speaker, and I think the House should continue to keep this on. I would like, on behalf of the House and the leadership of the Ninth House of Representatives, congratulate the winners of the best teacher in Nigeria and also the best principal in Nigeria who are here with us. Your achievement in that field of life, especially when it cuts across the issue of education, from basic to secondary education, is one achievement that each and every one of us will be proud of. Coincidentally, well, Mr. Speaker, these two achievers, these two icons, Mr. Speaker, coincidentally are of the opposition, are of the opposite gender, which is the women gender, also a gender that is assumed to be a weak gender, and these people have exemplary displayed a, a, a resilience, an act of excellence in the practice of their profession that is teaching. Each and every one of us here, Mr. Speaker, including your good selves, no matter the intelligence you have, I'm sure you have passed through the process of teaching. These are the people who have been the ambassadors of teaching as a profession in Nigeria. Mr. Speaker, going ahead, I would like to also urge on other Nigerian teachers to try as much as possible to emulate from these exemplary ones so that next time any other person could have the opportunity to be given this honor to appear before the hallowed chambers of the House of Representatives, the platform of Nigerians, the House of the Nigerian people, to be, to, be, to, to, be, to be celebrated. We stand here to celebrate with these two gentle ladies, to also celebrate with the Nigerian teachers as a body, to also celebrate with the, educational, the stakeholders in the educational sector in Nigeria at large. Mr. Speaker, I want to take your permission to also enjoin members to throw their accolades to these important ladies who have also exhibited a lot, a lot of uh, statesmanship in the discharge of their duties and responsibilities as teachers in the classroom. Mr. Speaker, let me also add at this point that we will continue to extend our tentacles beyond the showers of the business or private sector, beyond the showers of the classroom or secondary or primary schools environments, that we should also go deep into virtually every sector of Nigerian government, every sector or, or component of Nigerian governance to look out for people who have exemplarily displayed some sense of nationalism and some sense of exceptional uh, 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 display of actions to protect and also enhance performance in the course of their duty. Issues like, for instance, like the security of the country, sir. I can remember, I can remember clearly, we have a man who is also exemplary we have a man who is so committed. We have a man who is so selfless that wherever he is posted to work in protection of the Nigerian people, that man goes with passion. He goes with exemplary exhibition, and he does well in his own area of duty. This man is no other than a Commissioner of Police, Abba Kari, who is doing a lot in the sector of security, and he's a serving policeman. These are some of the people that this house should also try and even extend our tentacles to us. In the Nigerian army, you, can, you could have examples of such. And I hope the House will look at those people and bring them here to identify with us and we identify with them so that we can encourage and really promote the idea of perfection in whatever sphere of duty any Nigerian finds himself. Mr. Speaker, I thank you so much for this good initiative. And I also thank members of the House of Representatives who have agreed to keep this flag flying in the name of Nigeria, our great nation. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for giving me the opportunity. And you gentle ladies that are with us here, we identify with your pride and we are also proud of your performance. It is our hope and the hope of the Nigerian House of Representatives that you will also keep the flag flying. May God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you. Well, thank you. Before we move on to the minority leader, uh, the, the deputy whip is 
blackmailing me, saying using the gender angle, and uh, wants to have a quick word, and then we'll move to the minority leader. Honorable Nkiruka. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for allowing me to have a quick word. I will keep to that. I am Kiru Kawiyejo, I represent the good people of Isukwatu Munoj Federal Constituency. I am from Abia State. I stand here with uh, pride. I stand here with uh, some level of comfort. I stand up here with all the confidence to speak and to congratulate my fellow women for making us proud because I am a woman, I am involved. And I know for you to be here today, you have worked 10 times more than all the men in Nigeria. I know what I'm saying. And like the speaker just said now, that I blackmailed him into allowing me to speak. That's just one of it. Women, you have to work very hard to be where you are. So we congratulate you. We thank God for you. And even in this time, that what we hear from schools are people offering sex for grades. Let them know that you can offer services and then you'll be rewarded, you'll be celebrated. So you are giving a lot of people hope that teachers' reward is not in heaven as we used to hear when we were growing up. you get your reward here on earth and of course the reward for heaven is a surety. So on behalf of Nigerian women, on behalf of Nigerian children, on behalf of Nigerians who are supporting, because it couldn't have been possible if the men in your school did not support you to bring out your best. We say congratulations to you all, and we pray that God will lift you to the next level, to the best level, because I just learned a word this morning. It's not about the next level, it's about best level. I know that God will lift you to the best level where we we'll celebrate you in a bigger uh, sphere. I say once more congrats, congratulations and I wish you, I wish you all Godspeed. Honorable Ndidi Elumelu, Minority Leader. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Honorable Ndidi Godwin Elumelu and I represent the good people of our the federal constituency. I'm from Delta State. Mr. Speaker, a teacher is somebody who teaches. And seeing our mothers sitting here reminded me when I was in school. I had a female teacher who was teaching me on mathematics. Mr. Teacher, Mr. Speaker, mathematics was one of the biggest problems. And I'm sure many members here had the same similar experience. Eh? Each time I'm to enter the class, I'm knowing fully well that that very morning we were going to engage in mathematics. I will form that I'm not feeling fine. Because of the way I was seeing mathematics. But in the end, that my female teacher, that madam, made me, in the manner she tutored me, made me to be composed, and made me to know that mathematics is not a problem. It's issue of your belief. It's issue of having interest. That informed why I read accounting. And today, I am a successful man. Mr. Speaker, seeing them having distinguished themselves in the area of teaching, that is not easy. Mr. Speaker, one, they are poorly paid. In Nigeria, especially, teachers are poorly paid. But in spite of their poor payment, they still find time to have passion to impart in us what God has bestowed upon them. And for that reason, I thank them. It is not easy. It is the most not lucrative trade. Giving 
that it's just for them to teach at the end of the day. In fact, most teachers, before month end, they have done other what they call scale of preference, their salaries. And in the end, they will have nothing to take home. And they have no other business. They have no other. And at the end of the day, they are abused. There are instances where parents, even for talking to their children, they will insult them. So for them to have distinguished and, and so selected as the best teachers and the best principal, clearly shows that one, they are patient, they are humble, and they are very empathic. If they didn't have the passion to impart in our children, they will not be so selected today to be so recognized as the best teachers. And I commend them and I thank them for the passion, for the zeal. I could remember in Edo State, where the then governor of Edo State asked a teacher to define, to write something and read what she was asked to read. She couldn't. So for these teachers to have distinguished themselves and so nominated Honorable as best teachers, Rural Development, take your seat. Clearly shows that not only that they are well educated, they are also mothers seeing them. They have also taken good care of their family. They have taken all the pains to tolerate the students and went through all manners of abuse and were able to come out today to be so recognized as the best teachers and best principals. All I can tell you is that you have done honor to yourself, to your family, and to this nation. And I believe that God will reward you, even if no man reward you, but God. The best reward comes from God. And I believe that what people have done, the heaven is rejoicing because you will be so rewarded. And on behalf of the opposition, we want to thank you. We want to thank you immensely. And after this session, I will tell you what the opposition members have asked me to give to two of you for your passion and for what you have done in being nominated as best teachers. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. But most importantly, let me thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Elumelu. Honorable colleagues, let me use this opportunity to thank our teachers all around, all around but particularly to thank the winner of the Best Teacher Award and the principal for your commitment to education, your commitment to our students, and your untiring efforts to ensure, in spite of all the difficulties, that uh, the future of this nation is guaranteed through your education and your commitment and dedication. You are indeed high achievers. I myself, have take, I take time out regularly to teach, and I know how difficult it can be that you do it on a daily basis, hourly, after hour after hour, is indeed something that must be commended and appreciated. Many say that your reward is in heaven, I believe your, your reward should start here on earth and then it continues when you get to heaven. I want to thank you once again on behalf of everybody. They say law is a noble profession, but I believe teaching is the noblest of all professions. And through the house, you see this, what, what, what we're celebrating here today, it's not the house that is celebrating you. I want us to understand that. Every member of this house represents a constituency. So for me, it is Nigeria that is, that is celebrating you and commending you through its members. And I hope you take it that way. You continue with what you're doing. We wish you the best. And um, as the motion and the prayer of the motion by Honorable Benson, 
which includes enhancing the budget that goes into education. This is the budget time that we, we are into budgeting right now. I will make sure that the prayers of Honorable Jimmy Benson and the House, as resolved by the House, is given uh, due attention. Thank you, and God bless you for what you do. We wish you all the best. We wish you well. And um, our best regards to your students, to your teachers. Do not relent in, all your, in your efforts. God is with you. Thank you very much. Members, I think we should rise and give them a standing ovation. Thank you. Let me just ask quickly, how long have you been teaching? Okay, I hope you all heard that, 27 years. Thank you, honorable colleagues, you may be seated. I understand the principal is not here, but uh, the principal is represented. Is it WIP or leader if you can escort our guests out so that we can continue with the business of the day? I know you have a motion. We'll list it. It will be priority as soon as we come back. We'll take it. We cannot have four or five motions of for urgent public importance in one day. By the time we, ha we have four motions of urgent public importance in one day, it means there's something wrong in the country. There's nothing wrong in this country. Yes. So we move to the business of the day, which is presentation of 12 bills. And I invite the clerk to read their short titles. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, Federal Colour of Agriculture, Ms. Kiri Kasama, SRMB 2019, first reading. Federal Colour of Education, Birinwa, SRMB 2019, first reading. Latuni Transaction, B 2019, first reading. Bet Debt, etc., Compulsory Registration Act, Amendment B 2019, first reading. Pension Reform Act Amendment B 2019, first reading. Federal Capital Territory Directorate of Road Traffic and Motor Vehicle and Regional Services Amendment B 2019, first reading. National Urban Development and Regional Planning Commission Amendment B, Assignment B 2019, first reading. Employees Remuneration B 2019, first reading. National Humanitarian Bureau Establishment B 2019, first reading. National Oil and Gas Museum and Research Institute, Oloibiri, B 2019, first reading. Pension Reform Act, Amendment B 2019, first reading. National Rose Funds, B 2019, first reading. Honorable colleagues, the second business of the day is presentation of report on the ad hoc committee to determine why the worry Port Harcourt on the uh, Calabar and Onisha ports complexes are not being put to maximal use. 
standing in the name of Honorable Buba Yusuf Yakub. Honorable members will recall that the matter was referred to the ad hoc committee on Tuesday, 16th July 2019. The report is ready for presentation. Honorable Yakub is invited to present the report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm Yusuf Buba Yakub. I represent Gombi Hong federal constituency, I'm from Adama State. Mr. Speaker, I rise on behalf of members of the ad hoc committee to determine why the Wari, Portacot, One, Calaba, and Onita ports are not being put into maximal use. You may recall, Mr. Speaker, that on the 16th, 7th, 2019, this House mandated uh, the ad hoc committee to go around, investigate, and determine why these eastern ports are not being put to maximal use. And because of our assignment, we have gone around all the ports. Uh, we have conducted three public hearings. We've conducted five stakeholders' uh, meetings and we have engaged over 100 uh, players in the uh, maritime industry. Mr. Speaker, I want to seek your permission that the House do receive the report of the ad hoc committee. Any seconder, please? Go ahead. Fine. Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, my name is Honorable Ifani Anthony Ibezi. I represent the good people of Idemili North and Idemili South local government area of Anambra State. Mr. Speaker, arise to second the motion. Heavily moved by my chairman, Honorable Right Honorable Vuba Yusuf. Mr. Speaker, I so second. Uh, those in support of the motion, please say aye. Those against, please say nay. The ayes have it. You may lay your report. Honorable colleagues, I must mention that this ad hoc committee, from my understanding and from what I've seen so far, did a really, really good job in the assignment that they were given. I haven't seen the full report, but the little I've seen and heard, I think they did a good job. Well done. Thank you very much. public importance it also admitted into chambers to achievers that's the best teacher and the best principal of the year 2019 who were honored for the occasion of the international teachers day on the general principle of a bill for an act to authorize the, the issue house the consolidated in a moment the federation continue the, the debate on the general principles of the 2020 appropriation bill but this is where we come to the end of the live transmission for today. Of which On behalf of all those that made it successful, I'm Lani Ali, thanking you for staying with us thus far and urge you to stay tuned as we resume the regular program. Follow us on all our social media.